go after folks who are here illegally, we should. Do appreciated Candy referring to when he supposedly said in the Rose Garden something about that it was an act of terrorism? Is that what you're referring yeah. to? Yes. Who was applauding? Mrs. Obama was applauding. Um, if I remember correctly, she won some, she applauded at one point. I turned around and saw her applauding. There was no applause amongst our circle of trust, as they call us. We weren't allowed to do that. I understand. It's interesting you say the First Lady was applauding because um, that's going around the conservative blogosphere now. <laughs> uh, Susan, thank you so much. It is. We appreciate your being. Yes, it is. I'll enjoy reading stuff on the Internet today. Um, did you decide who to vote for after? who are hurting the community, not after students, not after folks who are here just because they're trying to figure out how to feed their families, and that's what we've done. And what I've also said is, for you... It is prophesied as the end of the world. But is there any science behind this dire prediction? Could ancient oracles truly predict the future? The answer could affect us all, because history shows a surprisingly good track record for those who say doomsday is almost here. From Patriciana, who was born and raised Welcome in India, today. from old land of Hinduism, Eastern mysticism, and guru worship, stated the following in her book, Gods of the New Age. That emerged then into the Roman Empire, centuries before to be Chair. so specific in promise. The book of Daniel, written 537 BC, shows the supernatural origin of the Bible. Dr. Chuck Mister stated the following. They're at. Because straight is a gate and narrows a way that leadeth unto life, and few be there, few there be that find it. But I want you to get to 15, verse 15 all the way to 20. That's the key right now. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Welcome 16 says, You shall know that by their fruits do men gather grapes and thorns, or figs of thistles. Welcome to see. Verse 17, So every good tree bringeth good uh, fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth corrupt evil fruit, or fourth evil fruit, excuse me. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not good fruit is hewn down and cast in the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Priest, this commandment's for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory to my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because you do not lay it to heart. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung among your faces, even the dung of your solemn feasts, and one shall take you away with it, and you shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you. Thus saith the Lord. My covenant was with him for life and peace, that my covenant might be with Levi, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips, and he walked with me in peace and equity, and he did turn many away from iniquity. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. They should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts, but you are already departed out of the way. You have caused many to stumble at the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore, I will also make you contemptible and base before all people. According as you have not kept my ways, but you have been partial in the law. Have we not one father? Hath not one God created us? 
Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Well, that's it. <laughs> that's a pretty good question. We were here before. I, I just... Um, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his people, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may be abide in the day of his coming? Who shall be able to stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like filler, fuller's soap. He shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as the gold and silver, and they may offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old and as the former years. And I will come near to you, uh, I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swearers. Return to me, and I will return, return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But then you said, well, wherein shall we return? Will man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? Where did... <laughs> return to me and I will return to you. And then you say, well, wherein shall we return? And then I, the Lord, say, will a man rob God? And then you say, wherein we have, where did we rob you? You were cursed with a, uh, with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes unto the storehouse, and there be me meat in, in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground." So despite the fact that you've stolen from me and then you then even though I can see it and then you ask me, where did we steal from you? Where did we not follow your ways? Where did we not follow the law? Where did the priests go corrupt? Why did you lift up the one who was then punished? Oh, those are good questions. Um uh, well, what can be said, you know, at this point? Uh, it's, uh, it's um, just typical of the day we're in. I mean, I think, you know, the problem is that, uh, the problem is that we have an enormous amount of um, people that, uh, Right now, they're confused because it's, it, it is a confusing time. And I don't really do these podcasts lightly. I think you know that. There's a reason to come to a, you know, or a broadcast since sometimes these are rebroadcast out on the airwaves. So I could say broadcast, uh, you know, the analog airwaves, which, believe me, is preferable in music to my ears. But I told the Lord today, I mean, I'm up at, you know, fisherman's hours and I, you know, I told the Lord today, I would try to encapsulate all the things that I have been experiencing and all the perceptions that he's given me and all the horrors and confusions about now. For example, I spent many months explaining about, you know, why the um, BP oil spill wasn't going to become Armageddon. I mean, or, or doomsday, I should say, Armageddon. That's that's now, right? War, World War III. World War III is the division between people and the world and the fact that people are killing people all over the place. Every, every, every uh, brother against his brother running each other through like the days of the Civil War, only now on a more or less global scale brought about by the corrupt leaders who have, as I predicted, done what they I said they were going to do because no one can pay the debt. So we must have blood, period. And the president and his assigns and his uh, culture of death is to, he there to bring death. There may be a brief respite, but, um, you know, the bill must be paid. 
and the bill is really iniquity. And the blood that has to spill comes from the iniquity of the people. And the iniquity of the people is um, when it gets to a certain point, then the society is crumbled and destroyed, which is what the leaders and even the church leaders and the uh, secret society members, which are the elites behind the scenes, they are going for destruction because they believe like a, like a phoenix, a new utopia will rise out of the ashes of this. And I'm here to tell you that there will be no utopia. There will be no new world, world order. There will be no, um, the, you like this? Because this is what I told you you were going to get. This slow painful, seeping unto death. This slow, painful, confusing, isolated, fearful, wondering if you've been forsaken, slow slog into the depths of suffering as a man lives by quiet. And, and that's the, the removal of the feast from your midst. That's the removal of the blessing. You've been cursed. I've been cursed. We've all been cursed with a curse because we too um, are witnesses to it. Now, I may be, you know, not specifically cursed in the sense because being in Christ, I put my eyes on him and there is no curse. You see what I mean? But my flesh is cursed. And I'm cursed along with everybody else. Therefore, I can't just leave them. I have to convince them to turn around. <laughs> you know, the uh, being led by your dick can only go so far. <laughs> start Time to start thinking with the big head rather than the little head. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't even know. How, how in the world am I supposed to explain this? Um. Bear with me one moment while I get my controller here. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, believe it or not, I have a, uh, in the studio, uh, the room gets warm. So what there is, is, um, a mini split air conditioning. Have you heard about those? For, that's kind of a new thing, but it's a mini split air conditioning system from, uh, Fujitsu, which has a small, it's, you know, a small condenser outside the room. In this case, outside the studio, which is separated from the outside by a rock wall. And it's the rock on both sides of the wall. And then these tubes come through the wall and there's like a little blower that can, you know, it can either heat or cool. And uh, then you have a little, uh, uh, what do I have here? A little um, uh, remote control whereby I can control it from the, uh, from the broadcast desk. Now this desk, I don't have a lot of experience in doing podcasts. I told the Lord, but I knew that I had to start speaking again and I have to you know compose lots of music and I have to produce music and compose it and 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 produce sound and and you know this is kind of like I don't see this as really any different than that it's all kind of dealing with sound and you know Yahweh is the author of sound in the beginning and that's always been my way and I punched in here again and um so look the only reason to really um, tune in right now is just to get, you know, to try to get a handle on um, exactly what we're looking at and um, in general. And so let me just get back to uh, uh, Matthew here and, and uh, see if I can, you know, get to. Um, is that the way it is? It doesn't really. Oh, I see. It's, it's like you can go to Matthew, but you can't. I see. You can enter in a Bible verse. I see. Okay. So it's, you know, this is, I don't even know what this is. This is some application for, um, okay. So we want to go to Matthew seven. 
All right, and we want to go right to that chapter, that painful chapter. Uh, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And only you know if you're really doing that. Um, Christians love to check on each other to make sure you're doing that. And in so doing, um, tend to be doing the the sin that Jesus said not to do, which is to be overly judgmental, but it just goes with the territory. Uh, Many will say unto me on that day, hey, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Wasn't this like in in the book of Malachi? I'm sorry, I didn't tell you where we were. We're in the book of Malachi, wherein they, um, Malachi 2, if you want to read where the, where the people, where the Lord accuses the people of uh, questioning him when he says, you're doing this. And they go, really? Where are we doing that? Where are we stealing from you? Okay. Well, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In other words, here we are inquiring again of the Lord and actually, you know, like in a court of law, questioning him like a um, a witness, like, like he's the... Pl- the plaintiff, like he's the defendant, rather. And, um, you know, it's it's outrageous. And in thy name, have we not done so many works? And then, in other words, you must be wrong, O unwrong one, O O almighty, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, and all-knowing one. Well, this time you must be wrong. You've got the wrong people. And then I will press, profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, which are the sayings from the Old Testament dealing with the, the um, a people that is disobedient. Um, but if you do those, then your house will be built upon the rock, the rock being Christ. You will be as Christ. Furthermore, you will, you know, be born of the spirit and of water and of um, the kingdom, which is within you, which means that this must come forth from you. And, and it's also an interdimensional change and a physical change. Uh, And it's almost like people are all vying. They're being chosen and they're being called and they're vying for a kingdom in which they understand and a God, which they understand and a God that can be queried. And Lord, did you really mean that? Lord, are you going to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah now because you're allowing the, uh, say, Babylon USA to keep on and going in its apostasy and evil? And um... <laughs> of course, that's too in the eye of the beholder. I mean, one man's evil is, you know, is another man's uh, benefit or good. So, you know, what are people to think? Uh, what are they to say? What are they to do? And the answer is, what I found is that, well, they don't really change. You know, people don't, people don't tend to change. They tend to um, try to justify what it is they are doing and continue to do it uh, without repentance and say that they are completely within the will of the Father for doing uh, said thing. Okay. Anyway, everyone that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not shall be likened to a foolish man which has built his house upon the sand. So we have either the rock or the sand. And the rain descended, floods came, the winds blew, and it beat upon the house and fell, and great was the fall of it. Great is the fall of man. Great is the fall of each civilization. Each civilization that goes decadent and doesn't put the Lord first and doesn't recognize there's a creator and starts worshiping himself as God you know, I have these gifts and I can build these cities and I can build these empires and I can build this technology and I can really, I can really do a lot of things. You know, I can do it a tremendous amount of things, a tremendous amount. Um, I can do, I have all these powers in which I can do amazing things. Therefore I must be a God myself because I can do so many things. And, um, therefore, because I can do them, I just figure, um, well, uh, because I can do them, I will do them. And I don't really need an outside influence to give me permission of whether I can, uh, build my 
my empire here or build my empire there. I'll build it where I damn well please because I've been given that freedom. And people do, you know, can run on on their own volition, making up their own rules and um, just basically saying, you know, to hell with uh, some high authority. I, might is right and we have the might. So we will be, uh, I'm kind of adjusting my mic. I'm sorry if it's making noise and stuff. Uh, the, the, you know, never do, well, that should be done before you start podcasting, before you broadcast. You should definitely, um, you know, get your adjustments right and get you, especially when you're in a, in a, in a studio environment, um, you shouldn't just abuse the studio. And, but if I didn't get on this right away, we wouldn't be uh, speaking now for uh, 20 minutes. And basically what we're trying to do is what, it, what this is about today. Because you've heard these scriptures and you've heard the ones in the beginning. I almost throw them out as a joke because the other side is using all these scriptures and, and you know, <laughs> uh, quoting this and quoting that and tying this in and tying that in as if it justifies them. So now it's like, well, now they've tainted the scriptures. Meanwhile, Jesus is in the temple uh, accusing them of the religious establishment of uh, worshiping um, idols and killing the prophets and killing the lambs, killing the saints of the Lord, in other words, and then putting them, enshrining them on the walls to, to be worshipped as icons. And, and Moses is killing the people that had to worship the golden calf, meaning they're going to do their own thing and hell with Yahweh. Uh, they're going to do it their way. And so then they were put down. Jesus says, your house will be put, uh, built upon sand and you'll sink for great will be your fall should you choose another way, like yourself. So self-reliance never worked. It only led to tyranny. It only led to the bad guys being at the top in a brutal um, kind of uh, social Darwinism. Uh, that is competition, of the, the, the survival of the fittest. So you've got the Chicago thugs in there now because they're the strongest. And so they're in there um, as communists and they're they're not going to see it go if, if they have to before this election coming up. They'll just go ahead and start an overt hot war, start bombing something in Libya if they need to, to get for the poll numbers. I mean, they'll do, it's just, it's so sad. It's beyond sad. It's so childish to see people descending to be no better than your kids in, in, in on the playground. To be no different than children and no wiser than children and they have this well nah, 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 you said this nah, 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 you said that and you said this and then well what what are you gonna do about the economy well i'm gonna do this but my opponent he did this, 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 this. and if you don't like it and if you bother the president too much he'll just push the button <laughs> But it's okay because the debt is owed anyway. So he's got that option. Um, that would mean that the rulers, Caesar, Obama, Stalin, etc., had no empathy. No empathy. And other American presidents, I'm sure. But no empathy. In other words, you know, it's all about me and my, what I want to do. And if I've got to kill people in order to keep my power, I'll do it. All about me. In other words, that's, that's the brutal way of old, the way of no God. You see, this is, could not happen. A narcissism does not happen in a God environment. America is narcissist. And if you don't believe me, just go on the Twitter environment and go into the political realm, go into the music realm, go into the entertainment realm, go into uh, fashion, go into anything of the world of, of Babylon. And you will see um, the most shallow, vapid, idiotic people on earth, especially when 
celebrities start tweeting about um, politics. That's hilarious. And uh, they, they get so excited. Their religion is, is politics. Their religion is the state. Their religion is themselves. Um, but if you've been around actors and actresses, you realize that they probably couldn't do the job they're asked to do unless they were vain, you know, like worried how they look, worried how they're coming across. And, you know, it's insecurity and vanity. It rules their lives. It's very tortured. I would hate, you know, I'm glad I'm not an actor. Um, it's a very tortured existence, you know, this idea that, and, and every actor that has, and every singer that has fame has handlers, not one, but several and managers. I mean, handlers that if they start thinking the wrong way, like, do you think that there's an Illuminati conspiracy behind the, and then the handlers move in and just boom, no, there's nothing like that. Never has been. And those are agents of Satan. And, um, you know, this Disneyland is real and this is all it is. And you're beautiful and you're awesome. And you're just like a, a god or a goddess. And we just want to see you do what you do best. So don't go wandering off. You know, don't be going to the edge of the stage and noticing that uh, those mountains aren't real. Those desert scenes aren't real. Those oceans aren't real. That's just really a, a backdrop like Stanley Kubrick's... Uh, Backdrop in 2001 where he, you know, projected onto a, uh, a screen these backgrounds and these plates that he shot and everything was really done in the studio under tightly controlled environment, just like, and I am a firm believer to now kind of because of Jay Widener, the, 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 the guy that, or Widener or however, I don't know. Anyway, he did a film um, and one of you, one of you listeners, you sent it to me and I'm very grateful uh, because I was really curious about the movie The Shining and what happened there. And to see it as a confession about how Stanley Kubrick was the director for the false moon shot. And you can see, if you compare 2001 backgrounds and plates, you can see where the line is, where the, where the foreground ends and then the background begins, where the projection begins. And once you see it once, you'll see it every time you'll see that all, all the footage of the moon is fake, you know, all of it. And um, you'll see that, um, you'll see the line where the projection begins and the, um, and the texture of the ground ends and suddenly it, there's a change. You compare it to his work in 2001 with Apollo 11 and you'll see exactly, exactly what the technique that was used, which was kind of primitive and easy to catch now so you can go back and look at the footage now and you can see that it was completely 100% fake. I don't know whether we went to the moon or not. I could care less. You know, NASA has been a joke from day one. So, um, but, because <laughs> I mean, I know there are vehicles that are flying around to, you know, and going through warp speed and going through, you know, they're dealing with like wormholes and time travel and all that kind of stuff. So, I'm, you know, I'm like sitting here going, do we really have to pretend that, you know, we're just kept in a primitive state here and kept in, and I know that all that is out there, but it's blocked. And there's a reason. There's also a, a reason from the Lord. I guess we're in prophetic mode here. So there's a reason from the Lord that that's veiled, but it won't always be veiled. And 2012 will be a year of unveiling. And a lot of people are saying, like I had, was surrounded with people that, you know, different prophetic people saying different things at different times, you know, and, and saying things like, well, you know, um, that, um, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> the tribulation began and I had one guy say it was 2009 and then another one, 2010. Then it was like Rosh Hashanah, 2011. And, then now there's other people now chiming in, well, it's 2012 to 2019, and that fulfills the book of Daniel prophecies. And, and they know they can't go beyond 2019 because that would blow the whole generation of uh, Israel and after, and they, you know, they would blow their timeline. If you went to 2025, for example, most of these prof prophecy wonks would be uh, out of business. They'd be sort of herald camping out, you know, they would be out on their ears. 
And I've been going at this for years. For years, I've been telling you, well, no, that's not going to happen. No. And I just feel like, gee, I'm the poo poo guy. You know, I'm poo pooing it. You know, no, it's not good. Sorry. No, you're not going to get picked up tomorrow by, you know, sorry. But I don't disallow. And I tell you to keep your eyes on the heavens, literally, because angels intervene and you are not the flesh that you think you are. You are another kind of being that will be like a butterfly transformed to who you really are at some point. So you have to keep watching. And if it's going to happen after your death, fine. But I mean, you're on the way to that, whether you go from, from this life into it or, you know, which we, we often talked about the nuclear bomb as really opening a portal that you just walk into that and you're in the next spiritual realm and you lose no consciousness. And, you know, I don't get too far with that because it's just something the Lord showed me. And then I'm like, okay, so when, so when we see that, uh, or if there is a blast, we go right into it. You know, we just, we, we, we run into it because we're on our way um, to the eternal body. And the eternal body is micro macro. I mean, you are an eternal body and you will be an eternal body and you are part of the body of Christ, which is just one, John 17. So you're just one in the body. But there will be, there is multiplicity in that body, just like there are angels and you're like the angels, but you're here because the Lord needs this and there's mathematical reasons why the Lord needs this that have nothing to do with your personal suffering. You know, you're asked to do it and you agreed at some point to do it. And I, I can't tell you when you agreed or what state you were in, but I can tell you that before anyone that comes here agreed to do it, even the people that are being vapid and airhead like <laughs> Hollywood actresses, <laughs> even them, um, fashion models, photographers, the things that they talk, you know, I have to suffer out here. I, there's some famous artists out here that, you know, are internationally known and they live out here in the country, you know, and, uh, you know, there's like a, a little cafe and then there's a restaurant. There's not much out here. It's mo kind of moving this way, but I mean, between us and, the city of Santa Fe, for example, we have two prisons. <laughs> that sort of stops the growth. You know, there's also a big movie studio that that they just built right next to the prison, which is interesting because they use the prison. One of the older prisons that's not does not have prisoners has been used in many movies for um, you know for a set. So it's kind of like a lot of movie activity here in New Mexico, and um, and you know you've you've heard of the 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 you know the Emmy Award breaking awarded Breaking Bad and other kinds of shows and movies and whatnot. But anyway. Um, I am not impugning uh, people that have the religion of I or me. But they the price you pay is you become vapid, meaning um, shallow. Meaning um, you become uh, obsessed with, you know, your seat at that restaurant and how, how the chef is doing and, you know, or the sports game or the, how the actor's performance was or whether you're going to get paid. You know, and you're thinking of big ideas all the time and how you can, you know, you'll get them this time. You know, you'll get them that time. You're going to make your mark this time. Boy, I'll tell you, they're really going to appreciate you. You got a great idea going forward. And I'm not against any. I'm just talking about balance in a way. No, not everyone can be obsessed with this situation every day. Except for people like me and you, I guess. You know, so Brother Z, what's it going to be like? And I'm just telling you that we're like the angels. We're stuck in this. It's the most bizarre thing, but it's something the Lord wanted to do. And so he went from Genesis to Revelation and he laid it out what was going to happen. And we jumped on board and some people playing. This, I'm coming back around to my point. Some people that are playing the evil parts also agreed to do those, but it you know, in a sense, it's kind of like hell for them. You know, the did they volunteer? Were they conscripted? Is it all volunteer? And the New Agers will tell you it's all volunteer. We we actually created this earth. We are Yahweh. Uh, all of us collectively are God. 
and you know, it's true in a certain st- extent that everything is God, you know, because everything has God in it, or anything God created is God. But then there is this multiplicity and this choice. You know, I'm willing to concede that burning in the lake of fire forever and ever is a, is a limited time because that state of being is a limited time. But I also have to go back to Daniel and let me go there right now to Daniel 12. You know it very well. It's just that we have to, we have to continue to, to kind of get this. Um, Dan 12. Okay, so we want to go to like the... Okay, so I'm getting better at this. So at that time of the end, Michael shall stand up. The great prince withstandeth uh, for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a, a nation even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that may be found written in the book. Uh, you know, the Lamb's book of life. And many of them shall sl- that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Well, the shining one, the serpent in the garden, was also called the shining one, also referred to as the angel or an angel or fallen angel, if you will. But shining is the, the, the kind of being, uh, you know, someone had written me, a friend wrote and said it was really like a light being. And it's like, yeah, we can use the new age concept of light being. In other words, a shining being. You've seen some of the new age art where they have the shining being of the ascended masters coming in. But at any rate, the, the term serpent in Hebrew also means shining, like the shining one. If you look at it that way, then you see you don't have to get caught up in the imagery of a serpent or a snake. You can then uh, understand it a little bit differently. And um, this is a very attractive thing to humans, that you would one day be an eternal being that shines. And you would have craft, chariots that take you places, controlled by your mind. And there are places to go, things to do. There is a whole other, this is not even a world here. This is Disneyland. This is not real. And that's the other thing that if you look carefully through the Bible, you'll find evidence. This is a test. It's a classroom. It's a a, a temporary uh, condition. It's not the real us because that, you know, in Christ we are formed and then given birth, and you shall not live unless you're born again of water and the spirit because you're becoming a spiritual eternal being that is shining as the stars. That also means freedom. Because beyond when we see the stars, we think of freedom. You know, we think of freedom to be eternally, you know, I mean, you know, a shining being has more eternality than a star, which is actually limited. But, you know, so Daniel will seal the words of the book. Remember the seven thunders. And even at the time of the end, many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. And then there are things that John couldn't write about in the book of Revelation because of the fact uh, that they were sealed. These are the seven spirits of God and the seven mysteries of God. And contained in those mysteries is the reason for the season for all of this. Because, you know, you can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and miss the reason. Because it's sealed. The reason is sealed. No, not Christ is the reason. That's an easy answer. But, it, it's, but Christ is a mystery. So what's the mystery of Christ then? What's the church of Christ being a mystery in Psalm 91? It's sealed. And these seals, not to be confused with the seals of Revelation, which are events that have to happen, um, the, 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 the seals opening is like the, um, you know, the opening, um, uh, it's the tripping of DNA within a people as well, of these events that shall happen, which the book of Revelation speaks internally and externally about events, events within your bodies, DNA, 
and events within the world and events within the cosmos. And it's all wrapped up into one. And how a person can get through that book um, without spiritual guidance is beyond me. I actually don't think they can. You know. But anyway, at the same time, there's an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and the great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. And set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Now, what is the reason that he should be loosed a little seat? Why should there be a redo of this? No, no one knows the answer to that. That's the point. Oh, you can conjecture all you want, but you, you cannot say that you know the answer to that. Why would God need a little more season? You can speculate, oh, to make sure, you know, those ones that are stragglers, those, it's like, nah, that's not, that's got nothing to do with anything. That's not the way things work. It's not so human centric that it's based on the stragglers. I mean, yes, the Lord wants no one to perish and people to wake up and all that, but he already knows the ones to wake up because he created them to wake up in the first place. So is there free will? Not really, but we have to play it out like there is. What's that? That's another mystery. What's that? A paradox? No, it's another mystery. Do you know the answer to that one? No. And I don't know the answer and neither do you. It's sealed. So the earth dwellers, which are like, you know, the industries of the earth, Babylon, the actors, the actresses, the, you know, the ones that are not awake, you know, the, I, I point to them. I could say the models, the photographers, the, uh, the people that uh, edit the magazines and put out the propaganda. They're never going to know really any of these things that are happening. They're really not going to know. Uh, the, 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 the story. They're not going to ask the question because other people get killed or suicided when they ask those questions. Just accept that there's an Illuminati behind all the uh, entertainment business and sports and all the folly. And they make the choices what actors and what actors and actresses become famous and what don't it's made the decisions not made by directors and talent scouts and whatnot it's made behind the scenes it's made by people half a world away they, they decide who will be the president who's going to be the star of the next uh, generation they decide those things so everyone's vying to 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 make sure they sell out to the highest bidder to get a good shot for the uh for the lead and I'm going to hell uh, part 65. And John says further, then I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Ouch. You mean you want people to be beheaded for the witness of Jesus? That seems a little harsh, doesn't it? I mean, to be beheaded. You want people to be beheaded? For the testimony of Jesus Christ and for the word of God. Yeah, those who are uh, Torah people, they're in the same boat. Because, you know, Jesus Christ identity is the Torah fulfilled. Which is something that, uh, you know, there's quite a lot. In fact, there's a great remnant of Jews right now who have uh, woken up to that fact, and uh, it's growing every day. So that prophecy is fulfilled that uh, Paul uttered. You know, he said that uh, there had to be disobedience and a rejection of Christ in order to bring the gospel to the world, and then it returns to where it started. And it's like, yeah, that, you know, that's Yahweh. <laughs> that's, that's exactly him. And Paul would know. He would know. He'd been to the third heaven. He saw things he couldn't describe because he's forbidden to, because it's part of that seventh thunder thing. He can't do it. The seven thunders of God. Well, let's just go there. Let's go there. Let's see if this browser is any good. Okay, so we have... Uh, 
we have three. Okay, so we're in Revelation 10.4. Okay, let's see it. All right. And when this... Um, what happened? I just lost it. Shoot. Let's try it again. Okay, we'll go to the King James. Um, and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, it's Revelation 10, 4, I was about to write and I heard a voice from heaven saying up to me, seal those things, seal up those things, which the seven thunders uttered, because what happened is the seven thunders, the mystery started pouring forth, which is what they will do internally. And that I believe is a DNA tripper, but I mean, let, let's just, let's just look at it. So another mighty angel comes down from heaven clothed with, a, clothed with a cloud. Ah, yeah, angel craft. And a rainbow was upon his head. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the New Age St. Germain type stuff. But I mean, you know, the, where did they get it? They counterfeited it. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet were as pillars of fire. Yep, chariots of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and left foot upon the earth. Uh, so it must be very big. And cried with a loud voice, and when the li like when a lion roars, and when he cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, "Seal up those things which are the seven thunders uttered, and write them not." Okay, then okay, back to uh, Dan the man here, and. Uh, Where are we here? Okay, so the people, the Holy Spirit, the of the Lord, till the end of these things come. Now, move that out of the way. Now I'm stuck with this thing. I don't want this window. Holy moly. Now I'm, I don't want an expanded window. I just want my old window back before I did the search. Gosh, this is irritating, you know? This is irritating. Okay, that's better. So there, you know, so Daniel, it says in Daniel 12, 9, and he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So the seven thunders are the thing, are the mis is the mystery that can't be just blabbed about because these seven thunders, like seven spirits, like, like lions, you know, just come forth with the truth. And part of the truth is, one, <laughs> just an aspect. I'm not going to give you the literal thing on the head. One, um, the purpose for the whole thing in the first place. Two, the, um, the division of God's people and others and what constitutes others and God's and how the, the mystery of being forechosen before the manifestation in the physical. Three, um, the blocking of the earth from all the other things going on out there in the firmament and, and uh, even from angels and demons and things, you know, the, the veil that's over the earth. Four, human consciousness being limited five time and space six dna seven the identity of yahweh i mean something that can't be written in a book who does these things all these things and why and if those things were known People would not do a dang thing here on earth. They would just sit around figuring it's over. And the Lord wants movers. He wants people to move through the drama and he wants them to read their scripts. Because I liken the whole thing to a, to a theater company. It's, you know, the, the script is written, i.e. the Bible. 
And people are going to play their various parts. They may not even know why they're playing a certain part. And they may find it impossible to leave that part they're playing. But they're going to do it. And the Lord is, is not going to reward inertia. And if the seven thunders are uttered, and if the mystery of Daniel is, is not sealed, then people won't do a damn thing. Just like if you knew that there would be a rapture next week, you probably would go run up your credit cards. I don't think, you know, if you knew you were going to be out of here, just like if you know, if you know you're going to have a death sentence on your head and you're going to die next week, if you have any energy at all, maybe you're going to go uh, on a splurge just to get that last bit of life in before you go. And if you can imagine everyone doing that, then it would cancel the whole point that Yahweh was in the first place um, all about and all things would be known and there'd be no point to doing anything, not a, not a thing, not a thing. So we're going to keep the seven thunders and, the, and, the, and Daniel, the, in other words, the rest of the book of Daniel, the rest of the book of Daniel is sealed. There's a 13th chapter of Daniel that isn't here. It's, I see 12. I see 12. And after chapter 12, we start the book of Hosea. So there you go. We make an abrupt uh, left turn, squeal out, you know, and we're gone the other direction. The point of Hosea is to say to the people of God, you are the sons of the living God. It's, uh, you know, it goes right into a, a, a short kind of one chapter book. You know, I mean, not one chapter, but, but it goes into a chapter in the book of Hosea. And in the book of Hosea, like many books in the Old Testament, to identify who God's people Israel are and what, and then Jesus comes in that's right, there, there's 14 chapters in Hosea. So there's plenty of, you know, the, yeah, you could spend a year in Hosea if you like. Because, but all it's going to do is tie into the New Testament and tie into everything in the Old Testament and then tie back to Genesis and tie up to Revelation. It's just going to be the same thing which you could do in any chapter. Every chapter screams the mystery of the seven thunders. Screams the mystery of the kingdom is within you. Born by water and spirit meaning by something physical and by spirit into an eternal being that shines like the heavens that already exists because time and space is not real in eternal terms. So therefore you have to exist somewhere else. And that's another one of the contained in the mystery of the what I suppose. You know, who, what, where, and why, you know, plus a couple other mysteries. And um, you're not becoming something. You are sons and daughters of the living God. You're not sons and daughters of man. But you've been behaving and disappointed and depressed as sons and daughters of man. Well, man will reject you if you're sons and daughters of the living God, and you just have to put up with it until you get to the next thing. But what does it matter? You walk in, um, in the heavenlies right now, if you want, just by keeping your eyes on the Lord and just you know, blowing off the dramas of day-to-day -day life and what the people's opinions and, and you know, living and dying by each thing and, and politics and, and, and religion and, you know, events and war and money and, and lack thereof and, and all the other things. You just have to understand it's not about that. And, you know, we have to go back to Daniel to, to teach you the Sermon on the Mount, which is don't worry. He took care of the, of the grass, you know, and the, and the animals and the birds and the, and the lilies of the field. Why wouldn't he take care of you? So put your mind on the things of heaven and the rest of what you need will be added unto you. But get your mind off the practical things because that's what the earth dwellers do. Are you an earth dweller? Or are you a son of the living God? 
If you're a son of the living God, you can't worry. You just got to go at it. And no, when they do their rituals and their different things they do, you won't be partaking and then they'll get mad at you. You're not going to, you know, give them your soul. <laughs> and so it's going to be lonely in that sense. And there won't be anyone to help you. And, and they will, believe me, in the end, they'll regret that, not, not help, not, you know, because they're in their comfort zone as earth dwellers. And they believe they have it all figured out that somehow from the flesh they can rot some kind of future by digging into themselves and by having something valuable within themselves that they sell to one another while they're buying and selling the lambs for battery, uh, for battery power. And they think that no one's going to catch them. <laughs> Every day I see it. You know, and I'm like, you know, if you know me, my way has always been the Lord. You know, it's what you, and I'm a terrific sinner, you know, in the sense of just being a weak. I hate the flesh, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, it's been a disappointment and, and then you get, you get old and then you get uh, sick and then, you know, you hate that too. And then you hate the fact that you, you know, you'll, you'll have to go uh, slam a couple of drinks or whatever to get the bastards off of you rather than going down your knees down to prayer, which is what you should be doing. You know, stuff like that. That drives me nuts. Ah, Lord, 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 gosh, if you don't intervene for me, if you don't grab me by the scruff of the neck. I mean, please don't just scare me. It's like, okay, you're going to die tomorrow. Okay, I'll be, I'll be good. I'll be good. <laughs> now we reap what we sow. And then, you know, we're, but it's so hard to make a step in the right direction, isn't it? It's so hard to change that bad habit, isn't it? I had one when a, there was a fellow brother here, you know, working on uh, setting the studio up, and I'm basically every other, you know, a, a few times a day, I'm I'm saying the F word. You know, I'm just really embarrassed with that. That's not me. That's not me. And I repent for that. I'm sorry about that. I got to really knock that off. You know, I don't like, I don't want to be, thrown in that's what they do on their twitter accounts when they're talking about you know romney or whatever and they're saying f and f and f and they think they're really cool and they're you know it's like now nah, this life is you know keep laughing because you know a blink another second or two and you're out of here and your beauty is gone and they don't call you anymore from the casting office must be a couple of actors tuning in here next month but i'll talk to you now No, you obviously have the same. I'm not talking about, oh, yeah, now go defend your brethren. Ed, you, know, you don't have brethren to defend. Actors are not brethren. They're cutthroats. So let me just put it this way. You don't have brethren to defend. You are either going to understand you're an individual that has an opportunity to walk with the Lord or to go die as a man and, and you know, die as a soulless one never having realized the spiritual birth potential within you. But when you walk that way in the spirit, you know, unless you're going to be like some outward hypocrite like the sannyasin in, in India, you know, where you have to look oh so holy and how skinny and, you know, you deprive from the world, you know, it's, oh, this one must be very holy. Let's give him some money. He'll give us a blessing from the Lord. And God laughs at that. Ah, ah, people fooled by these outward appearances. Central casting, go get me a yogi. Boom. There you go. Oh, will you talk to God for me? You know, and then on and on and on. Or get me a prophet. Boom. Ah, will you talk to God for me? <laughs> no, I, what I will do is I will help you by pointing out that turning from the delusion means turning to Christ, turning your life over to him, and he'll show you everything. He died for every one of you so you could live, but you have to turn to him. And if you turn to him, it means that Yahweh the Father is drawing you to the Son, 
and the son in turn um, reveals to you the father and both father, son, the spirit of God, the world, everything is actually within you and is being birthed like you are a part of it. You have, there's a physical, actually a practical, pragmatic reason you exist and it's got nothing to do with your purpose because you don't know it. In other words, it's his purpose for you while you think you're on the way to your purpose, it's his purpose that's being fulfilled. No matter what you think about it and what your opinion of it is, his will will be done, not yours. If yours is different, you could also pray something like this, Lord, let my will be your will and your will be my will as one. John 17, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I'm so tired of carrying this burden. You got to be somebody. You got to do this. You got to be successful. You got to make this thing work. You got to pull this thing out. You got to heal that thing that's sick. You got to, what? I can't, what? I turn it all over to the Lord right now. I'll turn it over to the Lord. Lord, you've, if you don't heal me, it ain't getting done. Just kill me then or heal me. Bless me as I bless you. Let me be one with you. And if it is my time to die, then I will die. Because, Lord, there's nothing else but you. In the end, that's a true statement. That's one of the mysteries of the seven thunders. Nothing else but God. You can make a case that the entire creation and manifestation of the multiple physical realms is all still not exactly. And from that perspective, you can't understand the real reason for it all. It must come into illusion and delusion in order to be a thing. But the pure thing is the thing behind that creation. And the purpose of that thing behind the creation is the purpose which all things behave to. All things conform to that. There is no conformity. Ah, my favorite topic. There is no conformity to the world. There is. uh, Let me see if this is still going here. There is no conformity to the world. There's obviously illusion. There's this idea that this is the world and I'm going to make the best of it. And in order to do that, when in Rome and I'm going to be like them in the hopes that I'll get a shot too. And, and that's basically the way a lot of people are raised. They believe that defines them as men and women, adults. When you finally learn what the world is like and then you learn to get along with it, you've grown up. It's like no, you haven't grown up. When you finally learn that it's not your will that matters, then you've halfway grown up. But the idea that you, um, and your opinion, and your conformity, that may work in the physical realm, that currency, that money, if you will, is worthless in the ultimate realm or the realm of real reality. In the realm of reality, your money is no good. Your rank is no good. Your getting along with the world is no good. It's actually anathema to the truth. It's remaining a child. I, the most childish people that, I, that I've seen lately, just in the Twitter sphere, have been, besides myself, I mean, you know, getting in the political thing and... Yeah, it's fun. Take a few shots here and there. And I've done that. And, you know, I'm sorry, but that's not who I am. And that's not who they are either. But we want to create a world where we think it's all about this or all about that. Something we can't understand. The election. If Romney wins, he'll save America. We've got to get it done. We have to attack the enemy. You know, all that is fine, but it's fought to the Lord. It's complete nonsense. You got to, to grow up, 
to really be an adult, to really be mature, to ever have a hope of wisdom, one must understand it's not about our will. It's about his will, and to the extent that we get to learn about him and have a relationship with him, with Christ, at that point, um, you know, not my way, Lord, but your way, that's the beginning of wisdom and the beginning of growth. And that's also a, a, a surrender that we can't do it on our own, and we can't do it collectively. Man collectively has failed. That's ba- man collective is Babylon. It's mystery Babylon. Is the collective of man who all conform to each other, who connect with each other in the hopes that they can overcome the obstacles, uh, a thousand points of light, a new world order, and all that stuff is pure poppycock. It's complete and total folly, 100%. Um, uh, and, and the other thing is you have to become an enemy of God just to get ranked in it. You saw at the DNC where they all cheered to reject God. These people are absolute idiots. I mean, they are fools <laughs> to beat the band, fools. You have to forgive the audio. I see there's a few spikes there because of the fact that I uh, you know, was too close to the mic when I was. I have to have it so the mic is not really in my way, but it's, it's there. And I think I've got it a good place now. But, you know, it's... Um, it's a good mic, and um, I really like the way it sounds. I think you do, too, from recreating the human voice. And I don't have to sit on, on that mic like on a cheaper mic or a live mic. You have to have it right there at your head, face, you know, and then you, you can't see the screen and you can't, you know, because there are other things we want to talk about. The spiritual realm will never conform to the physical realm. And the people who conform to the physical realm will never be acceptable in the spiritual realm. And that is an axiom of truth you can take to the bank. It will always be that. That doesn't mean the Lord doesn't use people in the physical and spiritual realms and move the pieces around as he will. That doesn't mean that, I mean, God doesn't make any false things, right? Um, so he's, yeah, so I've raised the volume a bit so I can get further away from the mic. He doesn't create any false things, okay? Um, yeah, this is going to be all over the place volume. You just have to forgive me. I'm just, you know, I'm dialing it in. It's, it's a new rig and all, so it's not easy. And I told the Lord I would, you know, come into the studio and speak to you from here and I would uh, make sure you know and that way too I can go through um, the latest in news items and uh, not the least of which is the political theater I guess the actors and actresses who participate in in politics. You know, maybe, and everyone that does, I don't think we all realize, and I've done it the same way. So I'll put myself in that same category. I don't think we all realize just how ridiculous it is. (laughs) At the same time, God wants participation in this reality. If I just sat there and said, ah, I've seen through it all, <laughs> it's Disneyland, which I know, it's one of the mysteries. of the se- That's one of the seven thunder mysteries. You can't tell the public that because they won't do anything. What about me? Knowing some of these mysteries, am I going to do it? What he wants? Am I going to be active? Is there going to be some work that will go out there that will help somebody? Because I know, even if I know it's Disneyland, I must go to the next thing or do the next thing or be, you know, or serve that burger to the uh, unwitting, unsuspecting, no matter what restaurant I'm in at Disney World, there's the same burger and the same Coke and the same fries. I can't tell them that. I got to just serve the burger like it's the first and last burger I'm going to serve. And that's all there is, is it's a burger and those are fries and that's a Coke and that's a unique Coke and fry and burger. It's not 
some mass produced thing that's in every kiosk at Disney World. Because I look at the news, I see Obama, Obama and uh, Romney. Um, I see them all scrambling to make political points on who did what and said what where uh, in the Benghazi um, debacle where people died. And here I, while I'm looking at that, I'm seeing mass death coming that make that look like nothing. And I see the president had zero empathy for the people dead, which I told you a long time ago, the king would not have empathy on people he killed. Whether he did with a drone or whether he, you know, whatever, he's, it's, he, he has no empathy, none. It's no ability to feel, to, uh, to, to grieve over those lost. You know, he just, you know, he feels that's beneath him. And, um, no, I support the troops because they're doing their job and they may understand this, this broadcast, this transmission perfectly well. And yet they have to go out on the battlefield and kill and be killed because that's where they were placed, even though they're brethren. And others can be placed in other places and they're brethren and we see them here and there. Far be it for me to say, don't do your job. Because it's Disneyland. No, it's Disneyland, but Yahweh wants us to to embrace the drama as reality. Yet we know it's not reality and it's not the end all and be all. There will be an answer to this and we will know, but it won't be of our timing. And we just have to grow up on that. And that once you know there's a designer, once you know it's not your will, once you accept that the only way to be really part of uh, what's going on is to be uh, in his will, thereby foregoing your own plans, let's say, that would be the beginning of, I would say, adulthood. Or, you know, on the path, adulthood is another word for, another phrase for, adulthood really is another word for the path to wisdom and truth. If it's not leading to wisdom and truth, but vanity, it would not be growing up. It would be remaining a child and hoping and trying to fashion the world. You're, you're playing God wanting to make the world your way. And that's the majority of people on earth who appear as adults, but are still babies. And, they will accuse you of being the child because you won't accept the world as it is and you won't conform to it. And you'll say, no, that's not, <laughs> I mean, you, you don't understand. And never the twain shall meet and there never will be, then that's a true statement. They don't understand and there will never be understanding because they can't, because it means the death of the, their reality and themselves to get to truth. You must die to self. You must forgo all desires really in a way of that you yourself had as an individual perceiving the world and wanting to make your mark in it. Those who wish to make a mark are at odds with the Lord. Yet the Lord wants that mark made. And <laughs> And then that's one of the uh, one of the mysteries. That paradox that I just said right there is one of the ultimate mysteries. And this will, you're never going to get this in a church because they can't. They need to teach you that the, the the reality is church, and that you know they're the center of reality, and that pulpit is where the reality is flowing from, and you need to conform to that. And it's just another you know hail Caesar moment. You know I'm I'm probably being kind of you know not being as gracious as I could be because there's a lot of good work, especially charity work that comes out of churches and, and a place for people to go when they're troubled. And, you know, there are people there who will listen and there are people there of service and there are people there who, despite it being, you know, corrupt on one level are, you know, going 
to um, how shall I put it? They're going to um, be of service and be of help to you. And in so doing, they're you know they're not doing anything wrong. Um, and I'll just let it go at that. I'm not against them. I'm just against the false perception that that's some kind of reality that that you know then cuts off the spiritual flow. And unfortunately, I've seen that in all of America, and I suppose all the world. But that doesn't mean there aren't servants of God everywhere. And it doesn't mean there aren't satanic people there as well, which there are. But I've never been able... Yeah, I, You can't say get rid of these churches and you can't say um, at the same time... Uh, embrace them because they don't speak the same language as the angels or the Lord. So they would be a different thing. They would be part of Babylon. At the same time, there are people in yeah, Babylon doing good things. And But let me say, the people who are doing evil things in Babylon have been sealed, marked to do those things. That's why in the end, you know, it's not going to be what I would want. We, you know, you get the, 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 the curtain goes down the stage you know, and you go backstage and the evil people and the good people that were in the play, they take off their masks and everybody hugs and goes out and has a pizza. That'd be great. That would be my way. I don't understand the Lord's way. It's a mystery. It's part of the seven thunder mystery that is going to be sealed up. It's not going to be convenient. There's never going to be a, uh, a definitive answer. And even when we can receive an answer, because it wouldn't make sense right now anyway, but even if we could perceive the answer, by the time we're able to receive it, it won't matter and we won't want an answer or need it. We will just know. So you're never going to have it. It's always going to be frustrating unless you quit, die to self, die to ego, die to everything, give it all over the Lord. And that's what we have to do. And I, and I get caught up in the world just like you do, you know. Um, if you're a lamb of God, that means you're not a slave of anyone in the world. So the world will, um, you know, if you're not ranked, you're unwashed. So you'd be just cast aside and that will make it easier but you're a, a, would be considered a living sacrifice or your parents may call you a waste. A total waste. You have talent, you have this, you, have, you could offer that to the world and it would be great. But along with that, there's something else and then that cancels the <laughs> whole point of having been born. So, you know, it's, just, it's, a, it's a conundrum that can't be solved. Cannot be solved. Targeted individuals. That took me 78 minutes to get to that. We're just going to do a whole show on this. Targeted individuals, as I've said before, and I'll say it again, were targeted before they were born, period. And I can't explain the mechanism by which that happens. The physical manifestation that backs that up of, of people following or the people surveilling or people doing things... Um, you know, it, it means all targeted individuals are special in the sense that they're um, beloved, of, beloved of God if they repent. Yeah. The world, once you're targeted, I can say this with absolute authority. Once you're targeted, there is no going back. You're never going to be just okay in society. The only place you can go is Christ for purpose and for whatever. There is no, eventually it'll stop or eventually you'll get your reputation back or eventually they'll, you'll get with an employer that's not part of that evil system and it'll be okay then. You'll be left alone. No, it's not true. And, you know, some people have implants and things, and those implants are, you know, even more hardcore. That means you're tied into the military-industrial complex 
and um, that either through birth or through bloodline and or through a, or there's an experimentation going on regarding you. And, you know, just like people that are abductees, it's the same thing. They're, they have implants and there are certain ones in certain families that are and others aren't. They're interested in certain ones. And I've known quite a few of these ones over the years. And it's all going back to the military industrial complex, really targeted satellites, space, theater, satanic ritual, implants, occult, control, experimentation, DNA, transgenics. You know, and the whole goal of all this is ultimately to build the super creature who can be an eternal being without needing Yahweh. <laughs> and we've talked about that. But, you know, all the sciences and everything you see and all the secret stuff, it's all kind of, you know, they're, that's where they are behind the scenes. And it's all kind of like, um, you know, that's where their head's at. That's, that's, that's what their, their goal is. That's their religion. Their religion is self, and it's to be a self-contained eternal being and they've already done this, actually. What are the aliens? You know, the hybrid alien robots. Well, someone was successful somewhere building a machine, a bio machine that could live in eternal terms in this physical realm and not see death. The only problem is the first models they made looked really emaciated like these skinny insect kind of beings. And, um, you know, they were not, Exactly. The, the models they have now are much more sophisticated, but those were the early models. And those were really, you know, believe it or not, those, many of those were humans who then tried to download themselves into these alien beings. And then, you know, and they had time travel and all that going on, but even back at the time of Egypt and, 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 the, and the pharaohs. And, um, you know, they're coming here and continuing the experiments and the genetic stuff and interacting with the science community and all that because they are the science community because they are, they, they, um, you know, they crack the code and these early models are admittedly pretty ugly. But, you know, and then what ends up happening is, of course, there's an overlord and there's an overmind and the overlord and overmind uh, conforms all these things. So, you don't see them with personalities or empathy. Remember, there's no empathy. The lizard being, people that are lizards have no empathy. It's not like they're psychopaths because, oh, someone was mean to them. They were born that way. It's like when Lady Gaga says, born this way on her album. Yeah, she, absolutely. She was born to, to serve them. Uh, absolutely. And they know that, so they chose her to be a star. If you want to be a star here, you have to make your peace with the lizards. That means you've got to conform to the, 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 uh, the uh, conforming entity of uh, the day and um, with the Roman Empire, with whatever you want to call it. But you've got to make a deal with the devil in order then to live. No, in order to die permanently. And there's no watering hole anywhere on earth that has enough liquor for me to drown my sorrows if I had decided to make a deal in that way. Um, there is not enough liquor or drugs in the world to, to, to moderate my pain of knowing what would be happening to me. I wouldn't be able to enjoy. It's already bad enough because, you know, the real spiritual path is not your own and involves suffering. But I assure you, and I promise you, those who went the world's way are suffering as well. And furthermore, their, their growth of uh, intelligence and everything else is, is cut off. So they remain as children. And children hurt due to ignorance. And when the music stops playing, they're all going to, you know, it's going to be a horrible, horrible suffering because, you know, the, the, those who are wise would know, well, this is it. 
but it's not it. If you can even think along the lines that I'm speaking right now, you have it, the Lord's calling you, calling you by name and specifically. If you even comprehend what's being said here, you have a chance to turn things around. But I'm not going to promise you uh, that it's going to be pleasant because you see, we have the karma of humanity to work off. So even when you get right with the Lord, a murderer, which we all are by proxy. So a murderer has to go to death row anyway, even if he's in Christ and then pay the penalty. But he's in Christ. He has that peace. Understand now? In Christ, you'll be rejected by your fellow uh, industry, whatever you're in. And pitched out into the spiritual realm. And that's where you walk. And the, there is no going back because they won't let you back. It's not up to them. <laughs> that, that, that's, it's not like there's a person somewhere and go, okay, hey, can I get back? Oh, no, you, you fell from you or no, once you're out, you're out. Uh, sorry, there's no slot for you. I think we'll end it right there. God bless you one and all. I, uh, this is really about souls, okay? And it's, it's um, not too late if you can, like I say, if you perceive anything going on here um, or anything that's been said, you are a conscious being. The Lord wants you now. And he'll, he'll soothe you, guide you, take the burden off your shoulders. In turn, you'll suffer, but it won't be like the suffering of all alone and you're on your own. That's what Bill Clinton liked to talk about. You know, the, you're on your own. If you know, the Republicans want you to be on your own, you're on, you're on your own economy. We're all in this together. And they do all that kind of stuff. Well, that's what you have in Christ. You have, you're not alone. He's always there. And the angels are there. And there's a whole kingdom there. And so when we enter in that kingdom, it doesn't mean we don't suffer. It just means because the world won't understand. That's, you know, you might as well have never conformed to the world in the first place because they'll treat you just like, you know, you, you rebelled against them, so to hell with you. And anyone that comes to Christ has rebelled against them, has conformed to Christ, not the world. I, you, you're this and not that. If you're conformed to the world, then you're an enemy of God. If you conform to Christ, you're an enemy of the world. And there is no, the twain will never meet and there'll never be peace on this. That I bid you shalom, shalom, and may you be blessed. I'm not trying to just make it all bad. It was here long before I was born. It's been here from the earliest times, from when the good people were killed for no reason other than they were friends with Yahweh. And that injustice is going to be avenged. And on that day, coming soon, it won't be just one day, by the way. It'll be many days. You don't want to be without the Father of all things. You don't want to be without a relationship with Jesus Christ on the day of vengeance. And it's always a day of vengeance because we, any of us who reject truth, reject God in order to be friends with people and whatnot, pay a price already and already marked for death. And it's just, it's just horrific. But um, you don't expect me to go light, do you? <laughs> and so with that, I bid you shalom. I really am leaving now, and I will see you next time. This is Zeph Daniel, the Zeph Report. Uh, transmission coming to you on uh, the, uh, what's the date here? What's the date? Give me the date, guys. Give me the date. Thursday, October 18th, 2012.